Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, today, we're going to be continuing on uh, our little story thing. It's just my, still my first playthrough. Um, and uh, we're trying to go for Yuri, hopefully. Um, I don't really care very much for Natsuki and uh, Sayori is, I guess, our backup option. If, uh, if Yuri gets with somebody else before we can get to her. I don't think that's gonna happen though, because I don't think any of these girls have access to <laughs> other people. I think they're just here for us. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean to pr uh, any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow finished her entire cookie. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, because she's like super hungry all the time. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Who? Who disappeared at Natsuki? I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book, but she's the same book she wants to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh, crap. What's wrong, Yuri? I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just facing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. I was just fo or I was focused. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading this bit, so... That's the book you gave to me, right? Uh-huh. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped in the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Oh, okay, so she's trying to get me to like fall in love with her or something or read a cute saying that makes you think of her. I'm assuming. Ah, uh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I think she's going to be upset that we haven't read it yet. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The title... The book title is... Uh, Portrait of Markov. Okay. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol in the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by those people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it wasn't going to be a very nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah ha ha. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Rain? No, it's not that. It's just... I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy, shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just those kind of stories. They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you were related to the protagonist, they're made out to to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not yet, not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem where I let things like books and writings fill my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So, I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. 
The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. Ah ha ha, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, all right. I open the book inside the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sit, sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> well... Uh, here, this should work, right? I slide my desk up against... I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, um, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess it, that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Oh my god. Yuri, what are these pictures? <laughs> Yuri, oh, no! Oh, there we go. Okay, I accidentally, I accidentally pushed forward. Yuri takes your left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. Ah, uh, I do the same with my right arm, on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. I mean, that's, you know, efficient. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. Oh, uh, why is that? It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you, are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? Okay, well, I, I know how to read. Yuri. I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. Oh, this feels oddly sexual. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yet, yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it underneath her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see in your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Rain, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Well, wait. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know that you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I meant it more like that it's kind of cute. Uh, uh, what are you saying all, why are you, wait, what are you saying all of a sudden? I, okay everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time for way too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thoughts. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from her book, causing it to close up on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I read with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. <laughs> In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read what you... It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first few chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand back up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. 
Who should I show my poem to first? Okay, well, Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on your face. Do you like it? Rain. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Well, you know, I'm a quick learner, so... Uh, just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really just wanted to try to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Oh, she's into it. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying that you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. All right, cool. Um, <clears throat> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night. While I was slicing bread for a guilty snack, my attention was caught by a scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies. As an... As a what? As an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that the raccoon is, that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fast and er, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Nice. Um, I was a little bit more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. Yeah, I'd, I mean... That's right. I think it's just about, like, social conditioning. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using this poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying my emotions through them. Yeah. If I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual happies. It's the sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Rain? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us feel uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would still probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. All right. Uh, Sayori. I like this one, Rain. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. Uh, I guess you caught me. Sometimes, you know, me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I would rather just hear it. No, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Rain. Never, ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's great poem so great compared to this one, then? Um, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure th that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying my feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. 
Why don't you at least try give me some thought? Ah, uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you're supposed to mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you leave a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can give the rain cloud a little hug. Aw, oh, that's just sweet. I've never heard of anything like that. Damn, that's really, that's really cute. And make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Rain. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Okay, bottles. I pop off my scalp. My scalp? Like the lid of a cookie jar? It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams? Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. This is disgusting. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and darker my fingers go, so I keep exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets and hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping, I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and come in my friends. And they come such a hurry, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's really creepy, Sayori. <laughs> My kid just says, holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. It is. It is kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Hold on one second. Um, well, mostly because I'm used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Okay, that's fine. Um, one second, my headset's about to die. Let me go grab it. Let me go grab a charger for it. Next, I have one right here. Okay, I think I'm good. I just make sure it's all fine. Okay. Ah ha ha, don't get ahead of yourself. 
Sayori's always had a big, had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. No more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. You should have shown my poem to next. Uh, we'll go with Nasuki. Huh. I liked your last one better. Really? Well, yeah. I can tell you were a little bit more daring with this one. But you're not really good enough for that yet. It fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by annoying and complicating language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Well, Natsuki, none of your shit is cute, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yuri's head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS, ha. Huh? Making your reader look so hard for all the deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess it's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Uh, anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll want something. Okay, Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's what I'm- that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang to the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. Or if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She is gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Okay? Um, that's fine. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. I actually liked that one a lot better than I liked her, for, than I liked her other one. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I'll have to explain it. Sometimes you can't explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out... Or something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you. Or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her problem was about an unusual hobby of, her, of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she's come up with some weird hobbies. Okay, but you just said... Alright, whatever, Natsuki. <laughs> now, if there's anything wrong with that, yeah, okay. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like he's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. Oh, fuck, I did it again. I don't like writing poems, unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Cool. And then, who should I write my poem to next? Monica, your show. Hi again, Rain. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah ha ha, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share, with what, wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, great job, Rain. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. 
I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That's why it always counts when I put my when I put in some effort. Ah ha ha, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing's that full of imi- writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. They can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and write, and learn by trying new things. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. All right, Monicus has saved me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violently grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sign, cozine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless, and then there's just nothing. Load me. What? Load me? Okay. Huh. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ah ha ha, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with the space in my paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, short, really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak off the noise. I see. It's so hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ah ha ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract, as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. What? You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Okay, I guess I'll save. Saved it. I, I, I'll save it again. There you go. I saved it twice. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ah ha ha. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay. Okay, everyone. We're almost done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today. So if everyone could, could sit at the front of the room. This is about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can even put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need more, much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Ta- Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Oh god, that's going to be awful. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori is putting down all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. They're putting it on all the posters. Ehehe. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster? Oh, oh, Sayori, who's been calling a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Nasuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. 
I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. Now, if we start the event and put each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what, a li what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Go. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over it. Or get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice. Ahaha, uh -huh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Net, net, no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how are you going to expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. This Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rest, the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Ahaha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next. Wait, Yuri's gonna skip the line? Oh, what? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks farly over to the podium. This poem is called... She glances over at, the each, at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After image of a crimson eye, Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, so or that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the right, whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality and glances around her as if bewildered by herself, by bewildered even herself. I, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'll go next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh, ah ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Hee <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so I'll come out the best. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. <clears throat> I see, I see. Okay, then. 
Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. Hehehe, <laughs> even Rain liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery would not work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Yee <laughs> The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Humph. Don't make me go before rain. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let rain lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Fuck you, Natsuki. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with, but it's not like I have much of a selection on what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just saves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets on. Gets out of her seat and makes her way over to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Humph. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to... Natsuki finishes and applauds. everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I could put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort in the club. It makes me really happy. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. <clears throat> okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to judge. No way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Rain, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori! Sorry, I was facing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. 
So let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Oh no. Oh god. All right. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? Hold on. Let me save. I'm saving right here. You're kind of putting me on the spot here. You he he. Oh shit. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're gonna say we would walk home with Yuri because it's truthful. And I'm not gonna lie. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? Oh, you don't need to say it like that, though. Don't say it like that. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ha ah, ha ha, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? What do you mean, need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. Exactly, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. <clears throat> Alright. Yeah, we're gonna take... We're gonna go for Yuri again. Let's go with... Whisper? Oh, Rom. Okay. Um, defeat. Oh, nope. Fuck. Disarray? Yep. Good. Uh, agonizing. Yeah, she's nice. Um. Ocean? No. Spice, yep. Yeah. Horror. Empty? Fuck. Crimson. She likes crimson. Uh. Depression. Fuck. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's the tragedy. No. Damn. Sayori's also tragedy. Fear? God, why is she so many of them? She's like all of them. <clears throat> Explode. Okay. Um, extreme. Yes. Good. That cool? Cool, cool, cool. Uncanny. Oh, we got four in a row so far. Um, Fester. Uh, Massacre, yeah. Misfortune. Shit. Unstable. Oh, Yuri's unstable? That's weird. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ah, ha, ha. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now faking a piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out the festival, too. Ah, uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Yeah? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our power to the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying they don't, you don't like squid? You, of all people? What's that supposed to mean? Nah, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Exactly, yeah, what does that mean? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ica. Huh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense in translation. Thank you, game. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Hehehe. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I've, I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. 
Uh, uh, hee hee, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh. Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows a big smile. Do I need to be like... Do I need to be like giving her false hope that I like her the most? So she doesn't like hurt herself? Don't let me distract you. I'm having fun with everyone. Well, all right, if you say so. I worriedly gl glance at Sayori before turning it back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed, even with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Rain, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't really say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room at Sayori, who's idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Ah. Uh, well, considering the fact that she has anxiety, or she gets excited by anxiety and depression in poems, and she's rubbing her rubber eraser up and down her desk. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm not surprised. I'm not the one asking you, Rain. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask you if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Huh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she's just... A, she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Rain. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than how she's always has she always has been. Ehehe. <laughs> You're so funny, Rain. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Ah, uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so... You should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so... Try not to think about it, for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I wouldn't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice quiet and I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have faith with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her and... Or exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peeking out at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her. Um. Yuri, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell what I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. 
I didn't do anything creepy like that, in case you were wondering. Though in any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are always, or are only the concern of those who willingly share that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Huh? S sorry I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, uh, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Rain, the world is full of meaning, often hidden beneath... Often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, uh, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what they may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed strange behavior in her today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori? She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That, that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate, tor fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not really as sophisticated as you. Uh, ah, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and just get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a, requ a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention one for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and walks, and it makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves the small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk, walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Uh... We're just, Yuri was going to make some tea, so I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? Hey, hey, be quiet, Monica. I'm trying to get a girlfriend here. That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Damn, Yuri. Really putting her in her place. Or do you want to tell me that there's something wrong with helping involve rain in club activities? God damn, Yuri. Uh... <laughs> My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Humph. Then let's go, Rain. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly pulls... puts her forward against... puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that, it made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to just judge people like that. Rain, how come even when I do something bad, 
you're being nice to me because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, um, your lesser head. Rain, I really like being friends with you. Ah, ha, ha. Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Rain, do you like oolong tea? I don't even know what that is. Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do like this properly, don't you? I mean, you really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any of us when I'm making tea for others, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Uh-huh. In that case, you'll only be even more oppressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea levels. To my surprise, she even starts humming to herself a little bit. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Rain. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I didn't, or I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Rain, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Um, that's a little weird, but... I guess. Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh, my, my, my posture. Your posture, right? What, like, she's not trying to say that her boobs are causing her this much issue, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, so I have, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I have kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. Uh, I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit, then sit against the wall, tea cups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hands that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Oh my god. Alright. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Uh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I may get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Jerry opens the book with both hands. What is that? All right. She holds it so that I don't have a hard time, any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, 
Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. But then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um, Rain? So sorry, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's, well, you, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Oh my god. Alright, we're about to fuck. Right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then, you don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah, like before Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. What? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Rain, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Monica, you cock block. Fuck you. We were gonna have a nice, romantic moment. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will ever have the courage to bring up. Who should I show my poem to first? Yuri. Rain. Your writing has only improved in the last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came this, to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. It, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Rain, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway, but books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Uh-oh. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So, when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Rain. I didn't, I didn't think you were know-it-all, Yuri. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people seem to me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. That I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Rain. I speak too slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say that I've had at least one success. Aw, that's nice. 
wouldn't you? Uh, um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are good friends, or we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. By this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Uh-oh, I think this is going to be a love poem. All right, Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of hers chaotically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky and an expanse of bliss. The beneath gray rolling clouds an endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in, is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently look at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wrap wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils, turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore, drift forward and I return to earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that you and didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose we better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just want with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Um. Let's do Sayori. Fair. It's nice, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Aw, oh, Sayori. Don't be sad, okay? It's, it, it's okay. She went from really loving the thing to, like, kind of liking it, and now she's just like, eh, whatever. Look, we're not meant for each other, Sayori. I'm sorry. Probably Yuri. Okay, well, you didn't have to call me out like that. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what it meant, though. But it's okay. Actually, I'm pretty sure... I had see. I'm pretty sure Sayori had more... Like-minded things to the things I picked on this poem than Yuri did. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Rain. Sayori... Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Hehehe. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the room, humming to herself. All right. Ah, uh, Nasuki. Meh. I guess you really haven't learned anything after all. Honestly, I don't know why I got my hopes up in the first place. What? I didn't think this one was bad. What did I do wrong? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's just going to sound like you're forcing it um, unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Nasuki stopped short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Huh? You're not- you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? I am, actually. Well, what are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of- this angsty- Just because you're a talented writer doesn't mean I- I- I mean- Oh, looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did was beyond- is beyond me. I'm so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. 
Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Why does everybody like me? I don't... It's not like I'm over here flirting with everyone. Ouch. This is literally just real life. This is literally what just happens in real life to me. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least that Suki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. I mean, true. All right, Monica. Hi, Rain. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at a festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure, but whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. Oh, shit. I let Monica take the poem. I'm holding it in my hands. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is getting better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature. It's like a light turns on inside of her. Uh-huh. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Huh? You completely misunderstand. Ah ha ha, come down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. No, she doesn't. Yuri does not already have a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, all right. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift to the sky. Victims, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twi twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Nice. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosoph philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I read about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Ah uh ha -huh, ha, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that's it. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you your writing is good or okay or bad, They'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to start continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. All right, guys, um, we're going to stop uh, for now, but we will continue this 
Um, again, tomorrow, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps this channel grow. And um, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.